Okay, let's continue with the next type of uh, customer's account. Okay, this is the last one, company's account. Okay, before we proceed to discuss on the company's account, let's look at the four classes of companies. Okay, there are four classes or categories of companies. Number one is a company limited by shares. Company limited by shares is referred to individual or investor who puts their money into the company and in return the company give, gives it a percentage of ownership in the form of shares. Okay, ni bila mana individu ataupun investor um, beli saham sesuatu company, sesuatu company itu and then uh, in, in return company akan bagi ownership. Sebab tu mereka ni yang beli saham ni dianggap sebagai shareholders. Okay, dianggap sebagai mereka ni adalah pemegang saham. So, they have ownership in the company. Uh, they um, they will be regarded as a, one of the owners of the company. Okay, so itu a company limited by shares. The second one, okay, tengok number two, a company limited by guarantee. Uh, in this case, there are no shares. Jadi, uh, there are no shareholders lah. Instead, the company will have members. Uh, sebab yang join limited uh, company limited by guarantee ni, uh, they only pay for uh, for fee, ya, yeah, yuran. So mereka bukan shareholders. And the liability limited to the guarantee amount. Berapa banyak amount yang dijamin ataupun yang dibayar. Alright. Number three is refer to uh, company a company limited by shares and guarantee. Uh, Maksud ini both. Uh, members are shareholders as well as guarantors. Okay, and the last one is unlimited companies. Unlimited companies is referred to um, company that the liability of members are un unlimited. Uh, and for example, if uh, the company unable to settle the company's debt, member personal assets are also involved. Maksudnya bila unlimited liability ni, company uh, sekiranya company ada hutang dan tak mampu bayar hutang, maka uh, hutang yang tak mampu dibayar dengan aset company maka uh, company akan gunakan aset personal aset members dia untuk bayar hutang company juga sebab dia unlimited so personal aset pun involved juga untuk bayar hutang okey itu risiko untuk unlimited company Okay, next, uh, the documents to be submitted to the bank. Okay, bila nak buka account, uh, when you want to open an account for company, for a company, so there are several documents that needed to be submitted to the bank. Antaranya, uh, okay, photocopy of all director's identity card. Okay, of course, the first thing is your identity card. Okay, ni memang penting ni. Mana-mana account pun mesti ada minta photocopy of identity cards. Cuma for company kita minta, uh, bank akan request for directors all the directors identity card. Okay, the second one is um, a certificate of incorporation issued by SSM. Uh, ni register of a uh, company ROC ni nama lama eh. Okay, so now we are using uh, Suruhanjaya Syarikat Malaysia yang ni. Okay. Okay. Perlu ada sertifikat lah. Uh, uh, apa nama ni? Pendaftaran lah. You daftarkan uh, company tu. Okay and the next one is a, a copy of memorandum and article of association. Yang ni kita akan discuss later on. Okay biasanya normally uh, company akan ada memorandum and article of association. So you have to provide salinan of memorandum uh, and article of association lah to the bank. Okay when you want to open an, uh, a company's account. And next is certified copies of a company's secretarial documents which provide particulars of the company's directors and shareholders. Okay, uh, it refers to Form 24 and also to Form 49. Okay, uh, in that document, ada maklumat on, there is a information on, information on numbers of shares health and also list of directors okay so this information uh, ataupun kita panggil salinan yang disahkan uh, uh, tentang berapa banyak 
shareholders dalam company uh, siapa company's directors okey semua tu uh, perlu diberikan kepada bank lah when you want to apply for for company's account okey next certified copy of resolution of board directors appointing the bank as a bankers of the company okey normally um bila you uh, nak buka company's account ni you kena ada persetujuan dahulu nak decide bank mana yang akan jadi bankers of the company okay so once you dah decide tu biasanya normally uh, during the meeting lah okay during the meeting board of directors will pass a resolution lah okay bank mana yang akan di appoint akan dilantik sebagai bankers of the company so mesti ada copy tu yang mengatakan certified copy ni yang uh, salinan yang mengesahkan bahawa uh, dalam resolution tu Uh, appoint uh, bank sekian-sekian untuk jadi bankers of the company and next one uh, the next one is mandate um, of course lah sebab apa mandate sebab dia melibatkan uh, syarikat dan mempunyai ramai uh, uh, apa panggil uh, ahli uh, ataupun directors uh, okay so and then ada uh, the, the next one is the specimen signature macam biasalah specimen signature ni of the appointed directors sebab kita hanya appoint certain uh, certain directors ataupun satu orang saja satu director je yang uh, bertanggungjawab responsible to operate the company's account tak boleh ramai-ramai okay normally CFO lah chief of uh, financial officer and the last one will be the rubber stamp okay Okay, now uh, we are going to discuss on Memorandum of Association. Uh, yang ni yang saya mention tadi dalam documents to be submitted to the bank kan. Salah satunya ialah copy of Memorandum of Association. So, what is Memorandum of Association? Memorandum of Association is re it refers to a uh, document that set out the powers, uh, the powers and the external activities of the company. So, uh, dalam Memorandum of Association tu dia akan uh, set Uh, ada maklumat on kuasa 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 dan juga aktiviti-aktiviti luaran company. Okey, antara item yang ada dalam memorandum of association, item-item yang ada dalam memorandum of association is the name of the company. Mesti ada uh, nama nama company, the place or address of the company and the object the objects of the company meaning that uh, what types of business allow ataupun uh, what type of business yang uh, company sedang buat lah okay and then the liability of the members is limited by shares or guarantee kena state dalam memorandum of association sama ada uh, the company is limited by share ke ataupun limited by guarantee and then the name and address and occupation of the subscribers subscribers ni refer kepada shareholders okay and the amount of share capital And the last one is its division into shares of a fixed amount. Ah, uh, fixed amount ni refer kepada uh, berapa pembahagian share untuk preferred stock lah. Sebab preferred stock ni kita tahu dia punya payment must be in the fixed amount. Okay, so uh, itu sahaja untuk memorandum of association. Okay, next is article of association. Article of Association ni pula, uh, kalau Memorandum of Association uh, for external activities, okay, Article, association, article of Association ni, uh, it, is a document, it is a document that set up the regulations governing the internal working uh, ataupun internal affairs ataupun internal activities and management of the company. So, uh, there are several items uh, stated in the Article of Association. Uh, for example, the duties, rights and powers of the board of directors. Okay, antara perkara yang ada dalam artikel of association adalah tugas-tugas, uh, hak dan juga kuasa yang diberikan kepada ahli lembaga uh, pengarah syarikat lah. Okay, next is the extent of the director's borrowing power. Okay, uh, extension yang diberikan kepada directors yang in charge untuk company's account tadi tu. Okay, berapa banyak extension yang diberikan untuk meminjam. Okay, biasanya dia ada limit lah berapa banyak yang uh, yang boleh dipinjam up to berapa juta. Okay, berapa bilion. Okay, so company akan decide benda tu benda sorry that information will be in the article of association lah the amount tu 
Okay, and then uh, next is the notice and proceedings of the meeting. Um, ini biasalah minute mesyuarat, proceeding mesyuarat meeting uh, AGM company kan. Okay, perlu ada dalam article of association. And then the right of different classes of shareholders. Kita ada dua, uh, kita uh, basically company ada dua dua jenis uh, shares. Okay, two types of shares which is uh, common shares and preferred shares. So, uh, each uh, shareholders, macam common shareholders, dia ada different right uh, dengan preferred shareholders. So, mesti all the rights of different classes of shareholders ni akan uh, ada dalam article of association. And then the next one will be the authority of the directors. Apakah uh, kuasa yang diberikan kepada uh, setiap director of the company. And then how capital may be altered. Capital ni refer pada capital structure lah. Okay, kita Uh, struktur kapital ni boleh berubah maksudnya berapa banyak uh, yang you nak um, gunakan uh, uh, apa kapital uh, tu maksudnya modal lah banyak mana nak dapatkan modal daripada debt banyak mana modal nak dapatkan daripada issue shares ataupun you nak issue bond okay so itu semua akan masuk dalam article of association and the last one will be the issue of shares and the calls on shares. Okay, the issue of shares ni berapa banyak shares yang akan di issue akan dikeluarkan dan call on shares ni refer kepada callable shares. Okay, ada callable shares. Alright. Okay, ni term yang uh, penting eh. Dalam uh, company's account ni kena tahu eh. Uh, just now I I did mention regarding the director's borrowing power kan. Okay, regarding borrowing ni dia ada satu istilah dia panggil ultra virus borrowing. Okay, apa maksud ultra-virus borrowing? Ultra-virus borrowing uh, refers to a loan which is in excess of the director's borrowing power. Okay. Um, okay, in excess of the director's borrowing powers. Correct. Okay. Uh, Maksudnya melebihi, ultra-virus borrowing ni ialah uh, pinjaman yang melebihi daripada yang dibenarkan, yang maksudnya melebihi kuasa yang ada daripada director tu untuk meminjam. And then, uh, satu lagi ialah ultra-virus ni bila mana objective of the objective of the borrowing is not consistent. Objective of the borrowing is not consistent with the memorandum of association and also article of association. So kalau you nak mudah saya dah pecahkan dua kat sini. Ya number number satu, number one is borrowing against objective as stated in the memorandum of association. Okey, ultraviolet boleh berlaku bila mana uh, directors tu buat pinjaman melanggar objektif yang terdapat dalam memorandum of association. Okey, yang ter, yang uh, yang ber Tentangan dengan objektif yang ada dalam Memorandum of Association. Itu yang pertama. Yang kedua, ultra-virus borrowing boleh berlaku bila mana uh, bila mana uh, the borrowing made by the director borrowing made by the director tu more than the amount allowed as stated in the article of association. Okay, dalam article of association, dia akan bagi tahu kan amount allowed, berapa banyak uh, extension yang diberikan kepada directors untuk meminjam. So, kalau more than that uh, limit yang, di, yang dibenarkan, so itu dianggap sebagai atravis borrowing juga. So, ada dua situasi, dua situasi, there are two situation where the atravis borrowing can happen. Okay, what what is uh, the purpose Or what are the purpose of imposing ultra-virus doctrine on companies? Apa tujuan ad, diadakan uh, term ni ataupun ultra-virus borrowing ni? Okay, apa tujuan dia? Okay, pertama sekali ialah to protect. Okay, first thing first ialah untuk protect the investors. Okay, kenapa nak protect investors? Sebab investors ni adalah penyumbang capital. Okay, kepada company. So, they, they uh, so that they may know the objects for which their money was to be employed. So, that kalau ada attributes borrowing ni, uh, directors tidak sewenang-wenangnya meminjam. Okay, sebab uh, bila dia buat pinjaman yang tidak ada sebarang reason yang kuku, dia akan mengancam kepentingan investors tu. Okay, orang yang... Um, melabur dalam company tu. Okay. And then the second one is to protect the creditors. Oh, oh. 
to protect the creditors. Why to protect the creditors? To protect the creditors such as bank sebab uh, dia nak uh, apa panggil sebagai alam lah. Okay. By ensuring that uh, it's fun to wish a loan they look, would look for payment in the case of a limited company were not dissipated dissipated or involved in unauthorized activities. Okay, nak memastikan bahawa bank bagi pinjaman kepada company itu tidak digunakan untuk uh, aktiviti yang tidak tidak uh, dibenarkan lah. Maksudnya involved dalam crime ke ataupun apa-apa skandal. Okay, so itu tujuan dia. Okay. Okay, when ultra-virus borrowing happen, adakah benda tu akan terus dihalang? Uh, Maksudnya pinjaman tu terbatal. Uh, not necessarily. If the company see that the borrowing tu actually uh, uh, apa panggil munasabah dan um, perlu diteruskan, so uh, the ultraviolet borrowing can be rectified. Okay, boleh diperbetulkan melalui uh, uh, melalui extraordinary general meeting ni. Okay, extraordinary general meeting ni, kita, uh, directors buat meeting tergempar. Okay, EGM. So, kenapa kena adakan EGM ni? EGM ni tujuan dia adalah, pertama sekali adalah untuk amend the objective. Okay, amend the objective. Kenapa nak amend of, uh, the objective? Sebab kita tahu tadi, ultra-virus borrowing tadi uh, berlaku bila mana pinjaman yang dibuat oleh directors, okay, the borrowing made by directors is against the objective in the, uh, memorandum, in the memorandum of association. That's why you have to amend the objective. Okay, this is number one. The second one is you have to rectify the excess borrowing. Okay, you rectify, rectify the excess borrowing by issuing new resolutions. Okay, untuk uh, mungkin uh, dalam artikel office session tu, mungkin state uh, boleh pinjam 1 million je. Now, directors nak pinjam 2 million. Ada reason dia lah. So, in order to make it uh, valid ataupun supaya benda tu tidak jadi isu, so... Uh, company need to rectify lah okay? pass new resolution bagi membenarkan amount baru diberikan okay? untuk buat pinjaman ok untuk ultra-virus borrowing ni ada legal case yang terlibat iaitu uh, case yang terlibat adalah uh, case Royal British Bank versus Tekun ok ini case dia So, daripada kes ni, wujudnya rule in tekun. Okay, rule in tekun ni, kita uh, adalah uh, daripada kes ni lah. Apa, apa, uh, apa maksud rule in tekun ni? Okay, kita tengok dulu. Kes ni, dalam kes ni, Royal British Bank versus tekun ni, persons contracting with the company and dealing in good faith may assume that acts within its constitution and powers have been properly and duly performed and are not bound to inquire or ask whether acts of internal management have been regular. Okay. To, to make it short, okay, saya bagi macam mana kalau uh, soalan tanya uh, meaning of root interquent, you boleh jawab yang bawah ni saja. Okay. Uh, if borrowing power exceed the exceeded the amount allowed in the memorandum and article of association bank will assume that company will amend it by passing a new resolution to rectify it okey katalah um, bila application to uh, application of borrowing tadi sampai kat bank okey bank tahu eh ini ultraviolet borrowing ni sepatutnya kalau ikutkan uh, pinjaman yang dibenarkan ialah 1 million tapi sekarang dah jadi 2 million. Tetapi bank tidak akan question. Tidak akan mempersoalkan application tu. Sebab under rule interquent ni, bank akan assume that uh, this matter has been set, uh, has been settled in, uh, in the company. Maksudnya dah settle dekat 
dalam company sebelum sampai kat bank. Maksudnya bank assume that uh, company dah settlekan dah. Uh, company dah rectify dah Astravius borrowing ni. Maksudnya dah pass new resolution yang membenarkan uh, pinjaman sebanyak ini. Okay, so bank takkan masuk campur lah. That's why kalau you tengok kat atas ni, um, uh, uh, not bound to inquire, nampak? Uh, not bound to inquire tu maksudnya tidak uh, tidak akan mempersoalkan lah. Uh, ni, uh, not, bound, not bound to inquire tu tidak akan mempersoalkan or ask whether the whether acts of internal management have been regular ataupun menanyakan kepada company sama ada benda ni uh, boleh proceed ke tidak ha, tak ada bank tak akan buat macam tu so bank kalau dia apply root interquent dianggap benda ni dah settle dah dekat company sebelum sampai uh, application tu dah settle kat company so dia just proceed saja. ok next uh, last but not least uh, kita nak tengok determination of company's mandate Okey, apakah yang menentukan company's mandate, pemandat dalam company? There are three factors involved ah uh, that may determine the company's mandate. Antaranya ialah resolution of board of directors. Okey, resolusi ni biasa dalam uh, meeting lah. So, uh, kat sini, the mandate will remain in force until a new or amended resolution is passed. Maksudnya, resolution yang sedia ada ni, okay, the existing resolution ni akan still effective sehinggalah ada... Uh, resolusi baru ataupun resolusi yang diubah sesuai diluluskan uh, kalau kalau selagi tidak ada resolusi baru ataupun ubah pengubah sesuai yang resolusi di uh, maka uh, yang lama masih terpakai okay and then the second one is the appointment of receiver appointment of receiver ni receiver ni adalah uh, wakil uh, that appointed by court okay court uh, mahkamah ataupun by debenture holder such as bank in accordance with powers conferred by the debenture. Okay? So, appointment of receiver boleh menentukan juga the company's mandate. And the last one is liquidation of company. Okay, liquidation of the company ni uh, bila company nak dibubarkan Okay, dia akan menentukan uh, mandate of the company juga. Own up of the company. Okay, bila company dah nak tutup, it cease to have any legal existence and all its contractual relationships come to an end. Okay, bila company uh, own up ataupun liquidate, so semua sekali kontrak yang ada sebelum ni akan terbatal dengan sendirinya. Okay, sebab dia dah tak ada... Uh, legal existence ini tidak wujud dah bila dia dah bubar ok ok this is the last part for chapter 3 power of attorney ok pernah tengah dengar perkataan attorney attorney ni apa attorney ni kita refer kepada lawyer lah ha, peguam so apakah kuasa peguam ni power of attorney ni satu istilah sebenarnya uh, merujuk kepada a document usually under seal through high court ha, biasanya dokumen ni Uh, melalui mahkamah tinggi which authorize one person called the attorney or donee to act on behalf of another person called principal or donor such as executing deeds hmm, macam ni um, dokumen ni memberi kuasa kepada seseorang yang yang dipanggil sebagai attorney attorney ni peguam lah ataupun kita panggil dia donee donee ni adalah peguam yang bertindak Uh, mewakili uh, orang lain. Okey, orang lain ni adalah dia punya principal, donor. Okey, kita panggil dia donor. Okey, so attorney ni adalah agent lah lebih kurang. Okey, so ataupun agent ataupun attorney ni kita kita panggil dia doni. And dia bekerja untuk orang lain. Maksudnya dia 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 bertindak ataupun menjalankan tugas uh, mewakili principal dia ataupun kita panggil dia donor. Okay, uh, contohnya untuk um, execute perjanjian, execute deeds, okay. Untuk um, me, me, uh, tem, apa, memetrai perjanjian. Okay, so normally power of attorney ni more formal than mandate. Uh, dia bukan setakat man, uh, written instruction yang biasa-biasa. Okay, sebab ni melibatkan peguam. Okay, okay so more formal than mandate is that the letter is drawn or prepared by lawyer. 
Okay, itu istimewa power of attorney sebab lawyer yang jadi agent kat sini. Okay, the power given by the donor to the attorney may be broader than the operation of account like selling a piece of land. Okay, maksudnya sekarang ni uh, power of attorney ni biasanya dilantik peguam ni bukan sekadar untuk menguruskan account uh, principal ni ataupun customer ni tapi lebih daripada tu mungkin untuk membuat transaksi yang melibatkan uh, um, apa uh, melibatkan kontrak yang besar contohnya nak jual beli tah, uh, tanah okey melibatkan hartanah dan sebagainya so normally untuk urusan-urusan tersebut um, customer memerlukan a uh, attorney sebagai uh, dia punya wakil untuk uh, urusan uh, jual beli macam itulah yang melibatkan transaksi yang besar Okay, now uh, let's look at the two types of power of attorney. Okay, basically ada dua jenis lah power of attorney ni. Special power of attorney. The special power of attorney dengan general power of attorney. So, special power of attorney ni untuk specific purpose je. Contohnya, so, bila dah disetelkan task dia yang uh, yang yang tertentu, maka uh, selesailah dia punya power of attorney tu. Dah uh, kira maksudnya, dah tak ada job lain lah. Contoh macam... Um, donor ataupun customer tadi lantik attorney ni untuk um, urusan apa selling a piece of land nak jual tanah ke apa so once dah complete their process so habislah power of attorney tu dah tak ada tamat tapi general power of attorney is refer to uh, power of attorney that to operate for a length of time extensive or more powers ha, ini lebih kepada rutin mungkin untuk tempoh yang Uh, panjang sedikit okay, dia continuous mungkin dengan dan uh, normally general power of attorney ni uh, kuasa dia berikan kepada attorney tu uh, more extensive lah ok ok next the last one is kita nak tahu power of attorney can be revoked or cancel by the following ok power of attorney ni boleh dibatalkan uh, dengan uh, melalui beberapa situasi. Yang pertama ialah when the expiry of uh, the period as expressed in the power of attorney. Bila dalam kontrak tu dah tamat tempoh. Okay, normally uh, kalau ada dalam power of attorney tu state. Uh, maksudnya um, power of attorney ni efektif daripada tahun bila ke tahun bila. Okay, katalah tahun, dah sampai masa uh, tamat maksudnya okey dia akan terbatas dengan sendirinya lah okey the second one is upon completion for the of the purpose for which the power is given ah ni macam contoh special power of attorney lah bila dah settle tugas dah settle kerja maka uh, power of attorney tu akan terbatas dengan sendirinya okey the next one is the third is uh, when the donor or customer expressly revokes the power okey bila mana customer ataupun principal tadi uh, nak batalkan uh, tak jadi dan nak guna hikmat uh, attorney tadi so dia revokes the power of attorney okey number four is when the attorney expressly renounce or transfer back his power to the donor or customer ini uh, bila bila mana uh, attorney tu ataupun peguam tu sendiri yang mengembalikan balik power of attorney kepada principal ataupun customer tu dia tak nak berkhidmat dah okey and then uh, next is upon the death mental incapacity or bankruptcy of the donor of the or the customer okey bila mana berlaku kematian ataupun um, ketidakwarasan uh, mental dan juga muflis uh, oleh uh, donor tu okey bila principal tu mati ke tak waras ke muflis ke so dia akan uh, power of attorney akan terbatal dengan sendirinya dan the last one is upon the mental incapacity of the attorney or donee uh, bila uh, attorney tu sendiri tak waras oh, maka uh, power of attorney akan terbatal juga okey itu saja untuk chapter ni. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.